I'm updating you on some heartfelt dog adoption stories. I take a wild ride with Vince, the one-eared German Shepherd, as he travels across the country. And the reason this family refused to do an interview on Mia will surprise you. Happy adoption stories and updates you've been asking for in this episode of Pup Dates. I have a lot of updates on Vince, including some meet and greets to show you that, oh, were stressful. But wait, just as a refresher, in case you haven't heard of Vince's story, let me start at the beginning. When I was walking to Kennels, I saw Vince and I knew immediately he was gonna need extra support because he had a missing ear. I went in to sit down with him and I didn't know if he would be comfortable with me in that kennel. He's a big dog and there's not a lot of space, but he welcomed the affection. And it broke my heart because you could feel that he had just been through so much. And you could see it. He was missing an ear. And it was almost like the affection that I was giving him was the first affection he'd ever received. He didn't know how to process it. It's almost like, I don't know how much affection he's had. He's willing to give it. It's, it's almost just like, he, though, he doesn't know what it is. Watch. So he's still curious about it. He's not, he's not 100% comfortable yet with pets but there was something in this underdog. Something that spoke to my heart that said, we have to find a way to help this sweet boy. Now, a lot of you said, I would love to adopt Vince. Him not having an ear makes him perfect, but I've seen it so many times in the shelter. If there's an imperfection with that dog, they often get passed by. And that's exactly what was happening with Vince. And I have to be honest, I was starting to get really worried. German Shepherds absolutely don't do well in confined spaces over long periods of time. And Vince was starting to show major signs of stress. I was getting worried and didn't know what to do, but then I found out that this meet and greet was about to happen. Now, Doberman would be a great companion for a German Shepherd, and at first, they were simply tolerating Vince, which is okay. But that tolerating started to escalate, and they started to growl. Is that a growl? It was clear at this point that they wanted nothing to do with our boy Vince. Oh, it breaks my heart that this meet and greet did not go well because now he's right back in the kennel. He's circling, he's whining, the stress continues to build. And I have to thank so many of you for coming to say hello to Vince, to see if he might be the right fit to do meet and greets. It means the world to me, but none of them were working out. But then someone else wanted to do a meet and greet with him. They have two German Shepherds. This could be the perfect fit. And you know what? The female German Shepherd, she was fine with Vince. And even the male was okay with Vince. The problem came when all three of them were put together. It created a dynamic that did not go over well. The male became protective and lashed out at Vince. And as the staff pointed out, Vince is not a dog who's gonna back down. He's probably been picked on before and he's not gonna put up with it. After multiple meet and greets failing, I was definitely getting disheartened. But you know who wouldn't give up? The team at Animal Friends of the Valleys. In fact, Lisa took a phone call from someone who is all the way on the other side of the country. Now, the shelter's not set up for out-of-state adoptions. There's a lot that has to go into that, including figuring out how to transport the dog. Shelters across the nation right now are overwhelmed, just even dealing with local adoptions. So to try to facilitate a whole nother layer of administration is really tough. But Lisa was willing to give this one a try because all other options had been exhausted. Exhausted. She walked me through what she was thinking and why she thought this candidate might actually be perfect. But she let this candidate know they would have to fly from Pennsylvania all the way to Southern California. And there was still no guarantee that this adoption would work out. Now I trust Lisa, but I was also worried because I hadn't met this individual. But all my nerves were calmed when Wendy showed up. I got the opportunity to talk to her and she shared with me how she's had many dogs over the years. The broken ones, the scared ones. We're not in Philadelphia, we're in our Noah. Okay. We're out in the country. Yep. I still have the fence, plenty of room to play. My daughter, who is a dog person, yeah. and my granddaughter, who loves dogs yeah. and is growing into that, can't wait to meet her. Oh, great. When Wendy showed up, I was beside myself. I was so happy. Immediately, I knew she was a dog person and the right mom for Vince. And because so many of you shared the video, she actually ended up seeing this and immediately fell in love with Vince. But here's the deal, it's not a done deal yet. And Vince doesn't know that she's flown all this way. Like, what if it doesn't work out? And then we even have to figure out how we're gonna do the transport back to Pennsylvania. I also have another German Shepherd that I wanna show you that I had the opportunity to sit with that is just beautiful because there are so many German Shepherds in the shelter. First, let me tell you some good news about Vince. Wendy said yes, he's adopted and he's going home. Attention everyone in the shelter, we'd like to congratulate Wendy for adopting our oldest resident, Vince the German Shepherd. Congratulations! Vince, you're going home, buddy. Thank you, me mom.
I can't believe it. After all this time, and thanks to all of you, and thanks to Lisa and the entire team at Animal Friends of the Valleys, it's happening. Vince is getting adopted. But wait, we still have to figure out how to get him to the airport. The good news is, Wendy got a hotel. She started working on logistics. She worked it out so that he could go back on the plane with her. We still had to get him to the airport, but you know what? I raised my hand. I was happy to transport this guy. I'm worried though, because this sort of transport can be really stressful for a dog. But what I thought is seeing how he does on the transport from the shelter to the airplane will tell us a lot. so good like he just passed down sleeping he, it's like he knows you know he knows he's safe now he was such a good boy the entire trip, I knew that the flight would be no problem for him. It's like he knew on the other side of all of this was going to be happiness and a family that really loves him. Special delivery. We need the morning of your flight. He's doing so good. He did so good in the car. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's not gonna have any problems. I can't thank you enough. Oh, I can't. Thanks for saving a life. Oh. And we, we appreciate you. Anything thank you need, you, you just let us know. My new fur baby. Yeah. <laughs> How was that, Rocky? The amount of emotions, like, I, I was just on a mission to get him here, and now I'm sad. I'm a little bit sad. But happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Overall, I'm happy. I took him to the airport, and I'm gonna read you what Wendy texted us back. She said he's perfect, we're such a good match. He's a good boy, and so loving and so sweet. He explored the house and has the run of it, but chooses to follow me around. Good boy, Vince. Wendy also let us know that he's extremely affectionate, which is so neat because it seems like he never really had that affection. She's actively training him, and she said he's a fast learner. And her family loves him, her daughter, her granddaughter, everybody's in love with Vince. And she put, Vince is now a member of the family. Wendy, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you to everyone who came up to do a meet and greet, reached out to see if they could help with Vince, who just came to the shelter to say hello to him. That means the world to me. And a lot of you said hi while I was there, and that makes me so happy. Thank you. If you want to celebrate with me, you can get Vince's coloring book. It's whatever you want to pay. My team said, hey, charge $20. I say just pay what you can or what you want to. Download it now. Start coloring it. It's something I love to do. I'll put the link down below, or you can just click right here on the screen. And tag me on social media with the end results. I want to see it. But wait, what's the update on the other German Shepherd that I mentioned? Rocket. Look at this dog. What do you see? A lot of people would see a really cute female German Shepherd, but I see something else. Heavy panting, open mouth, ears alert, a tight face, avoiding eye contact at all cost, and pushing herself against the back of the kennel. All signs of distress. I'm not sure I can help her, but I know I have to at least try. Let's go in and sit down with her. Don't need someone to save me. And don't come running to play me From miles away I can tell that something's off The way you look and how you pause When you talk, I think you said enough You said you love for me something brand new You said this is something you would never do Here we are in your car Let me see who you are who you really are, are, yeah. A lot of people don't believe me when I tell them how many German Shepherds are in this shelter right now, but you know what? I'll show you. German Shepherd, German Shepherd, German Shepherd, German Shepherd, German, well-ish. Shepherd, yeah, Husky. <laughs> shepherd mix, still, counts. Shepherd mix. Shepherd. Shepherd. Oh, wow. Red Shepherd. So pretty. Shepherd. Shepherd. Hi. Shepherd. 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 Well, Australian Shepherd. What's her name? She doesn't have one. Oh. The no name thing always gets me because you need a name. Like, it's a starting point of who you are and it allows others to love you and for you to give love. And there's so much in a name. She probably had a name before. Some dogs you come in here, I wonder if they even ever had a name. 
Here, you want to toy? You want to play? Toys? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's be okay. You just want love? For a second. Okay. Yeah. You're being over your head, babe. Is she melting? They're going to melt. <laughs> We're both melting. Okay, more to come on this gal, but I wanna take a moment to show you this little dog that I met in the meet and greet area named Timmy. When I sit down with a dog, I really try to put any preconceptions about their situation aside. I try to make sure that anything going on in my life, I leave outside of the room. And that was really important for Timmy if we were going to create a bond that needed to happen because when he first came into the shelter, he reeked of cigarette smoke. But I really pushed that out of my head along with everything else. And you know what? It worked. And now it's time for us to go to bat for him. We've got to clean him up and try to get the smell off of him. So Mel is going to step in and try to work her magic. This is the one they said smelled like cigarettes. And this is just a puppy that was never probably socialized. Now it almost looks like he's smiling, but he's not. You can see his face is tight, his eyes are big, he is nervous. Mel starts by washing him with a fresh lavender conditioning shampoo, both to get rid of the cigarette smell and to help him relax. Oh, and the name Timmy actually came from Mel because, you know, he was very timid, but she wanted something cute and endearing, so she shortened timid to Timmy. I like it. I think what breaks my heart about Timmy's situation is he's only five months old, and normally a five-month-old puppy would be boisterous, eager to meet new friends, having a great time, but not him. He's cowering the corner, he's scared. His life thus far has not been great. But here's the thing, this is why Mel is so wonderful, because she's getting him used to human touch, she's showing him it can be a good thing, and he's being brave, yes. He is still shaking, but he's getting through this. Okay, Mel turns on the quieter dryer to not scare him. And then she takes a lot of time to show him some love, which is so important because listen, this guy's been here for a week. Puppies don't last at the shelter for a week unless they're like this, where they're scared. And people that walk by look at him and go, something's wrong with that dog. It's gonna take someone who is willing to just give him time and shower him with love. I want to point something out. Look how much eye contact he's making with Mel now. Okay, now Mel gives him a treat, well deserved, and they head on out with this fresh new look. Now, it's still gonna take him time. He's still a little scared and timid, but Mel scoops him up and gets him into the play yard. And what I love is Mel said she's gonna take some time and sit with him. While she's doing that, I think I have some good news. Okay, supposedly someone is here right now to see Timmy, so let's go meet him. Okay, it's gonna be just a minute while the animal care specialist team sets up the meet and greet. So while we're waiting, I'm excited to introduce you to Augie. Floppy ears, buddy. Sorry you've been here for so long. You keep getting passed by. Why? He's just like, oh, he just loves the cuddles. He's like, leans into it. Oh, does that feel good? <laughs> Is that the spot? <laughs> it's like when they're this close, just getting to feel their heartbeat. And just, it just kind of slows down and time freezes for both of us. It's so nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you the reason that his family returned him. They wrote it on the form. They're returning him because he got too big. Buddy, let me tell you something. You were not too big. You were perfect. I don't know how someone could return a sweet dog like this. I don't care if my dog got bigger than Clifford the Big Red Dog. I wouldn't return him to the shelter. Honestly, I think it's just a nonsense excuse to write down. Maybe he was an inconvenience, they were moving. I just would never return my dog because they got too big. I imagine you wouldn't either. I'm sorry, buddy. You're not too big. You're just right. Oh, and while I was sitting there with Augie, I got some potential good news. 
Really great couple saw one of our videos and they came to see Vince. Now, it's not gonna work out with Vince and they're not even certain they're ready for a dog because they just lost their dog. But they're meeting with Augie right now because who knows, maybe he could be the right dog for them. Okay, so something about Augie is he will greet you with a hug. This is Augie's hug. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's going good. Their last dog was a German Shepherd. I think they want a German Shepherd, but I don't know. Maybe Augie's the one. Now, his jumping up is going to have to be corrected. It's a little cute right now. He's hugging, but that obviously can't continue. Oh, but I am nervous because what if? What if they picked him? Let's give them some time with Augie and let's get back to the German Shepherd girl. She still needs a name. There are a couple of reasons I sit with dogs. One, <laughs> for me. Two, to let them know it's going to be okay. They're not in here by themselves. People love them, I love them. And three is to start getting them used to human interaction. So when you come up to the kennel, they're excited. They, they're happy you're there. They know it means good things. They're gonna get treats or toys or love. And that just helps increase adoptions. And I know, I see the comments where people say, oh, and then you just left her. That's worse than if you would have ever come in there at all. I don't know, in my heart, I don't think that's the case. I don't see it that way. And I don't have all the answers, but I've seen the positive effects from this. And I've seen dogs just almost like that switch over and know that they're okay and that lead to an adoption. Hi, oh, you're so cuddly. Not all German Shepherds are cuddly, is she? <laughs> she is officially a cuddly German Shepherd. When you ask me, like, can you do this at your shelter? You can. You have to go volunteer and you have to spend some time and get to know the shelter and the rules. And, and maybe in some shelters or rescues you're not able to. But I'll tell you something you can do. Take a moment to sit with your dog. Like I constantly remind myself to just sit down with Kobe or Zoe. And I have a heart rate monitor and I check that. And when I sit down with him, the amount that my heart rate goes down is pretty unbelievable. So I challenge you to join me in sitting with dogs and sit with your dog. You may be amazed in just doing that a few times at how much closer it brings you and your dog together. There are moments when I don't wanna leave and I know I need to sit with other dogs, but this is the sort of thing where you could just sit here with her all day long. I wish it was my job. I guess that is, I guess that is kind of my job. <laughs> I can't stay all day, sweetie. I gotta go sit with some other pups. But you're gonna be okay, I promise. I don't know what happened to you in the past, but I promise you a bright future. But you need a name. How about right now, temporarily, we call her Rocket? Only because I ordered a pizza this weekend and they asked me my name, and then when the pizza was ready, they called out, Rocket! <laughs> I don't know if that's a girl name, though. You just need a nickname for a little bit till we find you your home. Here's some good news about Rocket. Later that day, this actually happened. Okay, I might be confused, but the team just told me that someone is here right now to adopt a German Shepherd, and it could be Rocket, that they already did a meet and greet and it went off without a hitch, but I don't know if it's the same dog, so we're gonna go meet up right now. I'm gonna show them, hopefully, but whew, that would be unbelievable if that's the case. Okay, as I was on my way, though, an issue with Timmy came up. So for Timmy, yeah. uh, apparently there's a guy who would like to adopt him. Okay. So he hasn't even met with Timmy yet and doesn't realize maybe he's gonna have some needs that he's gonna need to address. So we can't get him out into a yard because he's on hold. Technically, yeah. So they have to wait and see what happens with that before they can even show him to somebody else. Is there someone that can uh, override that? Well, they have to talk to him first. Huh. So let's see what the plan is. How do you get second holds on dogs then? The thing is, Timmy's adoption available, so there's not really, it's not like the normal, you can do first, second, third hold. If somebody says, I want to adopt them right now, and they're up there, then they have the first dibs and they have to see what happens with that before they can even try and show them someone else. Okay, wait, uh, two people want the same dog? Uh, that makes me really happy, because most of the time, one person doesn't even want one dog. So you, can meet him, you might be bringing him inside to meet him. To do that? Because he hasn't even met him yet, so. What is going on here? By the way, this is all good stuff. I'm just confused. <laughs> but I don't, I don't have to be looped in on everything. I'm not the boss here. <laughs> I'm just trying to find out all the information. Once everything was figured out with the adopter, it was officially time for the meet and greet. Well now, Timmy isn't very trusting, so the fact that he's even going up to him is pretty amazing. It turns out this nice guy is Rudy. He told me he has a fenced-in backyard, no dogs at home, and he thought adopting would be the perfect way to give back. 
He, he doesn't care that Timmy's not a bouncing, lovey puppy right out of the gate because he knows with time and love, Timmy might end up being just that. But even if he's not, I think he'll still love him for the rest of his life. Okay, bud, I need you to be a brave boy. We're gonna go home now. You got a new dad. You're gonna be okay from here on out. You ready? Let's go, come on, Bubba. Come on, come on. Let's go. Okay. You know, too scared. Attention animal friends of the values, we would like to congratulate the Baca family for adopting Timmy, our cattle dog, next. He is going to his forever home. Yay! <laughs> Yes! It's so neat. Uh, Timmy is still like unsure and a little timid, but you can tell Rudy is gonna be the best dad, dad ever. Like he loves Timmy already. He's got a fence and the yard set up. He's gonna be the only dog. This is, this is awesome. Yes! Meet Mia. When I saw her eyes, they just spoke to my soul. You could just feel all of the fear, all of the pain, all of the heartache in those eyes. And her eyes are actually what caught my attention. Which is a good thing because statistically, a dog like Mia will continue to get passed by again and again for a very specific reason I'll tell you about here in a minute. But first, let's sit with her and see if she'll allow us to show her any comfort. Okay, he's okay. Every time someone walks in the floor, she like pancakes to the ground. Good girl. Good girl. It's hard to tell, and this is one of the problems with black dogs in shelters is they're the last to get adopted because it's harder to see, especially when they kind of hide in the back of the kennel, their complexion. And look how pretty she is. Oh, her endearing eyes, cute little light brown marks, and her adorable eyebrows. What, uh, what's her story? So a good Samaritan found her uh, and caught her finally after she was running around for two or three weeks. And she was found near the freeway as well. Oh my goodness. Two or three weeks, sweetheart. What? What's going on? You're good at getting away from people, huh? The thing with, with Australian Shepherds is they're really intelligent. Like, often a little too intelligent for their own good. Oh, do you know tricks? Can you sit? <laughs> See what I mean? And you're already in the shake. Okay, shake. Shake. Both paw shake? Two, two paws shake? Yeah, see, so she was probably evading capture just because she's smart. My heart just breaks for a sweet girl like her because her intelligence just kind of drives her into fear. But you can see with a little bit of working with her, I mean, look at this. Shake. Come on. Oh, it's that intelligence mixed with that fear. Shake. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. You let me pet you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi. The question I get a lot is, have I ever been bitten? And I have uh, before, not not here with these dogs, just in working with dogs and fostering over the years. And I think just with practice you learn, it doesn't mean I won't in the future, like I, it just sometimes it's just bound to happen. But you just take a lot of steps in just paying attention to dog body language. And again, I hesitate even saying that because the minute I say that, you know, it's a risk. But I, I notice I get that question a lot. And I think it's a fair question. But this, this would not be something you'd want to start doing. You want to start by volunteering, walking dogs, learning dogs, fostering. Good girl. Can you lay down? Lay down. Good girl. 
And even with all my experience with dogs, there's still so much to learn. Anyone who tells you they know everything about dogs and they've got all the answers, steer clear. I don't, I don't have any more treats, that's it. Can we still be friends? No. <laughs> come here, come here. Oh, we, can, we can't be friends? Okay, thank you. That's all, that's all I'm looking for, guys. That, that, like, that right there is success. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, you, you may not be able to hear it, but there were dogs getting really upset out in the yard, and so that energy transfers over to her, and so sometimes when things are going really good, she was almost getting in my lap, an outside element happens and it kind of resets everything. She's nervous again. Come here, come here. That's a good girl, that's a good girl. Okay, I'm gonna keep a really close eye on her because I think she's gonna need a little more awareness and me just telling her story so that she doesn't get lost in the shadows in the back of the kennel. I have an update on Mia. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said her family refused to do an interview on her? Well, it's true, but I have some good news. It's because she was adopted by Steve and Steve can't do an interview because he's out on adventures right now with Mia. <laughs> How great is that? They don't have good enough reception to do a FaceTime call because they're out exploring. Now Steve adopted her about a week after I sat with her and he did share these updates. He brought her home, he's giving her time to decompress and she's getting to know her new sister, Coffee. Great dog name, by the way. Steve said Coffee and Mia immediately bonded and became friends. And Steve wanted to note the difference of the crazy face she had in the car versus now. So much better. Also, Steve observed her really closely and he noticed she has some scars, almost like there was some dog fighting. We don't know exactly what happened, but he did find a bunch of little scars on her. So she's obviously been through something. The thing that Steve knew is that she needed to be loved, comforted, and to be in a safe environment. He's been training Mia, and from what he says, she's a quick learner. She can now walk on a leash. She likely has never done that before. And she's sleeping through the night. At first, she wasn't sleeping through the night. She was probably having night terrors, or who knows. But now, she sleeps soundly through the night. Let me read this here, because Steve messaged us. He let us know that she's eager to explore the world, and she's excited about everything. He said, we expected some work, but it was all worth it, because Mia is a real Real sweetheart. Steve, thank you for saving Mia. Oh, and when I came out from sitting with her, I saw that really nice couple with another German Shepherd. So I guess Augie's not the one. Well, what are you, what are you guys saying? We're still, this is such a big decision yeah. for us. And but you gotta take it, you know, yeah. you know that's right. Yeah. When, you know, our parents are becoming seniors. Oh, okay. How are they gonna react to a dog? And, you know, yeah. does it jump on them a lot, you right. know? Yeah, so. I wish more people would think those things too. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, good. Well, I'll, I'll let you keep thinking. I just thought I'd I say hi and check it. in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is like a good first step for us because yeah. I, I didn't even know yeah. when we'd be ready. They aren't ready yet, and I understand that. I lost Flip, and I haven't been ready yet to foster or adopt another dog. And that's okay. Sometimes it takes the heart a while to heal. But what I love more than anything is they're putting their heart out there. They're coming to this shelter. And I know if you're watching this, you're the same way. You're that dog person. You're that pet person. And pet people, they're just good people. Okay, update on Augie. This actually surprised me. I wasn't ready for this. Haley and her boyfriend, Brian, actually saw Lake Elsinore share a social media post from Animal Friends of the Valley, a video that they made, and guess what? They fell in love with him, and they adopted him. This is what I'm talking about when I say every small action can really make an impact. If you see a video of a pet in your town that needs help, share that. You never know when that share might actually save that pet's life. Okay, but I do have some really good news about Rocket that I'm gonna tell you here in just a minute. But first, I wanna show you this little puppy that I sat with that oh got returned because their family said they were being too much of a puppy. What? Giggles. I heard a rumor that Giggles got returned because she was evil. An evil puppy. Oh no. Well, of course she does. Wait, why, why was she returned? Because she scratches and jumps. She's a puppy. So they returned her because she's a puppy pretty yeah, much? Yes, pretty much. Oh, come on. She's nine weeks. She doesn't know anything. No, 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 I don't have any escaped puppies. What 
happened? Okay, so this little one was returned. <laughs> for being a puppy. Now here's the thing with puppies. They're puppies. And they're gonna be bouncy and wild and biting <laughs> and, and nipping and whiny. This is why I say adopt an adult dog. But they're still amazing. But they need the same thing that adult dogs do and maybe even more like exercise and kenneling or at least in a pen. And she is so cute. But if you get a puppy, you have to be prepared for a lot of patience and a lot of work because she is not confident in who she is and she needs direction. And all this built up energy and lack of guidance ow, <laughs> turns into bad habits if you don't work with her. I think what breaks my heart about this is she's already so unsure of herself I mean, to be taken home and then just returned is so hard at a young age like this. This is a toy. <laughs> that is my shoe. Oh! Ow! Here, redirect. Redirect. You got it. Good girl. You're already learning. As a puppy, you know, you can definitely start training, but it's a little less about training and a lot more about redirecting and setting up healthy habits. So if you want a puppy, you either have to be experienced or you have to be ready to learn. See how she's not biting me now? She's redirected that energy. It just takes a little bit of time. It's been, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes with her. Giggles was adopted that day by a family that doesn't think she's evil and understands it takes time with a puppy. Oh, and do you remember earlier when I told you there was a couple here that wanted to adopt a German Shepherd and it could be Rocket? Well, it turns out it is. Oh, hey. Rocky. Thanks for adopting. I've been yeah. watching your video. Oh, thank every you. Every night. We watch you every night. <laughs> I, uh, I sat with the dog team, the one you're adopting. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, she's so sweet. She puts her head on your chest and she oh, just. So oh, she's here. so loving. Yeah. So oh, so what are you guys are doing so great? We, oh, thank because you. Because of you, we know about this place. Because of you, awesome. we win. We we look at uh, business first. Yeah, that's, well, yeah, yeah. it means the world to me that you guys would do that. No, no, your, your video is like, so helpful. Oh, thank you, thank you. We gotta we got tell these dog stories. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's amazing to me that they came for Vince, it didn't work out in a meet and greet, but they still know they wanted to help the shelter in the best way that they could. And because there are so many German Shepherds here right now, they were determined to find a German Shepherd that would be a good fit for their family. But we do wanna donate something for, for you to continue doing. You know what, that means the world to me. No, 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 not to me, you know, to the shelter. Cause, right. yeah. Because we're both a <laughs> that means a lot. Yeah, because I'm, I'm hoping he, you know, he's just going to need a lot of work. Yes, yes, uh, he's so sweet. Yeah. But this girl, this is Oh, she is he's perfect. Healthy. And uh, so you're taking her home today. Day. Okay. <laughs> this makes my day. They even picked out the perfect name for her, Emma. Now all that needs to happen is they need to get approved by the shelter to adopt. You're going home! You're adopted! You're adopted! We're all so excited. LT even jumped in to help deliver Emma to her new family. Congratulations to the Blee family for adopting Emma, our German Shepherd. Woo! Congratulations! Thank you so much. It means the world to me. Kristen and two eagerly brought Rocket, now named Emma, home to meet her new brother, a German Shepherd, Jedi. And from what I hear, it went off without a hitch. After they gave her some time to adjust, they took her to the dog park. 
to see how she would do. Emma is so sweet. The funny thing is when we brought her home, Emma turns out to be a rocket because when she's at dog park, boy, does she run. She's the fastest runner always, like a rocket. <laughs> Sounds like rocket's an appropriate nickname after all. A big thanks to Kristen for being a member. It's a small monthly fee, but it helps me continue to do what I'm doing. And you get to be a part of the community. So it's great to have you as part of the community. Thank you for sharing all of the pictures of Emma in there. And let me read exactly what Kristen sent to us. She said, it's an incredible feeling being able to take a dog out of the shelter and put her into a dog park. Th that is awesome. Seeing how fearful she was, barely being able to stand it in the shelter, to seeing her run in an open field filled my heart with joy. It's like a million Christmases in a one moment. That's awesome. Thank you, Rocky, for all you do. No, thank you for adopting and saving Emma's life. We're happy for Emma and we're very happy that she has a new life. We are so blessed, so blessed that she came into our life. She wants to res rescue from now on. She and I talking and say, you know, let's get more. I mean, the, the feelings is so rewarding. Let's make sure that she's all settled, happy, and then let's just ready to get some more, you know? Awesome. You all fill my heart with so much joy. Speaking of joy, I have a lot of updates on Dawn. But first, let's go back to the beginning so I can share with you her full journey. Look at this dog. You know exactly what she's going through if you've ever felt invisible, where people just passed you by or looked right through you. When I saw her, my chest hurt. It's that chest pain from your heart hurting so bad that your shoulders shrug over, you clench your fist in your eyes and you just wanna look away. But we're not gonna do that today because I have a feeling that's been this girl's life. Let's go in and sit down with her. She might be a little blind. I'm so sorry. Hi. Hi, what is going on with you? All kinds of things, huh? Oh, this breaks my heart. First, let me just say she's a senior dog and you can see some of the things on her are just from being a senior dog, but there are other things that are just downright neglect for years. I mean, her paws, hi, I am sorry. Whatever happened to you, I am sorry. And we got you from here. It breaks my heart that we just let dogs down so much sometimes. It's like her whole life was dedicated to somebody loving them and caring for them. And then this, they just give up on her in her senior years. And I don't know the whole story. Like, I don't know where she came from or what happened. But sometimes you don't need the whole story. You can just see it. I mean, her eyes are bad. Her paws are bad. Her skin is bad. And I don't think she's blind. I just think she's got so much gunk in her eyes she can't see. Hi. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. Hi, can you see me? Hi. Oh yeah, if you see her eyes, they're just all murky. See how that gunk in her eyes is just not allowing her to see. What does that feel good? She's probably super itchy too. You know, I mean, this breed just in general has challenges, skin issues, tumors. I'm being careful where I touch her because she's got some sores and I don't want to hurt her. This isn't your best camera angle, girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, you want to come up here? You want to come up here? Okay, there you go. Thing is, is like, she's got so many things wrong with her. She had a little bit of blood and gunk everywhere. And like, it's okay, I'll just go home and wash my clothes. I don't even care because she just deserves this love and she deserves to know she's gonna be okay. That her whole life of giving and loving and loyalty, it wasn't all for naught. You know, like, she is loved. I love you. Just meeting you, just seeing you. My heart breaks for you. Now, what's her story? Um, so she was found by Good Samaritan out on a main, a main busy road. And uh, they had her for a week and they stated that she was good with the grandchild. Oh, that's good. You like kids? Okay, so good with kids, probably good with cats, probably <laughs> probably good with anything that moves because she couldn't catch it. <laughs> That's the thing about senior dogs too, like a lot of people say they want a cuddly dog. <laughs> Get a senior dog, where are they gonna go? Oh, she can't see the camera. <sighs> what do I call you? You know, I don't always like to go with like hope or something like that, but maybe something like that, like what would be? Dawn. Dawn, I like that. Like Dawn. Yeah, Dawn of the New Day. We will call you Dawn. Yeah, wow. Dawn has a lot of issues. I'm gonna go see if I can pull a vet tech in here to examine her. 
Okay, I have something fun we can do today. I wanna ask the staff and the volunteers if they could adopt any cat from the shelter right now, what cat would they take home? So there's a black one on the mall over there, on like the bottom. I could take him on the, yeah, right? I love black cats. He's laying down, he's loafing it up. Oh, let's go check out Harmon. This will be our first ever sitting with cats. This is Harmon, right? That is Harmon. Wow, look at those eyes. Oh, you want love right away, huh? Right. The scoop is a lot easier with kitties. Oh, it's a big purr. What's his story? Um, so he was found as a stray. He might have belonged actually to someone before, but it looks like they reached out multiple times okay. to the, and there was nothing. So he's been here for uh, over a month now, well over a month. Oh, right. Okay, let's let Harmon stretch his legs a little bit. We'll come back and check on him. I want to tell you about this puppy that's been through the ringer. And I mean actual ringer, like doorbell ringer because somebody dropped him off at a random doorstep, rang the doorbell, and ran. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh. Like if you volunteer at a shelter, this is just par for the course. Like this is a normal day. You get to be around puppies like this. Oh, that puppy breath. <laughs> Whoa. Look, he's got the puppy belly. You know the puppy belly? Look at that puppy belly. Oh. What do you think? You ready for a puppy? No, because <laughs> our baby boy just turned one. Crew would love him. I mean, he really does match my pants, though. And my shoes. Like, he has the same outfit as me. <laughs> no joke, right after I sat with this adorable pup, I was told by the team he was getting adopted. What was your first thoughts about the dog when you first saw him? My heart sank. That was my dog. I knew right away. I called the that lady back and I was like, can I just take him right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Come on. All right, there's Dad. <laughs> Yay! And we're doing something really fun today. We're going to surprise everyone when they adopt with a Furbo pet camera. They're the sponsor of this video and they're matching all of our donation funds. To date, we've raised $12,000 total. Update from Esteban and his fiance on this rambunctious little puppy now named Ghost. Despite Esteban's busy schedule being a firefighter, they take turns socializing Ghost. And Ghost is even in a neighborhood doggy playgroup. By right where I live, it's like a little park in front of my apartment. And like we all get together, there's plenty of dogs, bigger, smaller, and they're just, he's so playful now. Awesome. Okay, let me read this right here too, because they say, whenever they take him to a mall or take him out, he captures everyone's heart and everyone loves him. Well, yeah, that's a no brainer. If Ghost doesn't stop you in your tracks, you are not a pet person. Okay, now they did say though, he's going through a teething and a biting phase, which means Esteban and his fiance are working together to make sure he doesn't tear up the house. Well, thank you though, for doing that and not just returning him. A lot of times people would just return a puppy and puppies are a lot of work, but they're worth it. If you're adopting, it's a big responsibility. He's not gonna be perfect. My advice is just, you get a dog, make sure you're gonna take care of him, make sure you're gonna love him. Make sure you're gonna cherish him, he's part of the family. <laughs> get this, I'm walking by the lobby and I see Kyla filling out a form and I was just joking. I said, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna adopt? And she said, yeah, I'm thinking about adopting Harmon. I, I'm not even kidding. You spent time with Harmon? Yeah. He's so cool. He's so sweet, I yeah. know. So she's filling out the paperwork right now. She's putting Harmon on hold because she has to talk to her family to make sure everyone's okay with this. But Harmon could be going home now. I mean, cats are so picky with treats. Hi. Look at his tail. Oh, he likes them, huh? You like them? And his tail's vibrating, so you know that he's, he's very happy. He a happy boy? I try some different treats. Oh, you like that? <laughs> you know, you know the treat bag. Okay. Okay. I've got a new segment here called "Letting a Cat Pick Their First Meal." I've got different kind of treats. Let's see which one he goes for. Oh, 
and in typical cat fashion, he picked none of them. You know, there's this myth about black cats that they're bad luck, which is obviously untrue. And the thing that's really sad about that is it affects the lives of so many black cats in shelters that just don't get adopted. I'm just looking it up, but it seems like the superstition goes all the way back to the 13th century, which is just mind blowing to me. And they even at the shelter have to be really careful adopting black cats out around Halloween. The superstition is absolutely 100% not true. And if you are one to believe in superstitions, know this, that feeding a black cat or treating them well will bring you good luck. English sailors that kept black cats happy believed that this would bring them good weather on their voyage. Wives that kept a black cat in their house believed that that would return their husband safely. So there you go. If you're thinking about adopting a cat, consider a black cat. Oh, and good news on Dawn. I was able to get Brenda, a registered vet tech, in to give us her assessment. Oh, hi, honey. Why do you look like you have hives? Yeah, she looks like... And her forehead's bleeding a little bit. Okay. So I know she had uh, a bunch of just generalized masses. Yeah. They are exactly without diagnosis. We can't really tell. Yeah, come here. Um, these kind of breeds have a tendency to get allergies pretty fairly quickly. Hi, honey. Can we see what's going on with the noggins? Let me see. Okay, so we had some really severe eye issues going on. A little bit of an entropy on it looks like, just meaning that the eyelids are curling inwards, which cause a lot of irritation. So we just need to clean out your eyes and get some meds you, in there. What do you think about the uh, paws? Do you think it's just her age? So the paws can be related to anything being either systemic or the same thing with the skin. If we're having a lot of issues, we're gonna be itchy on our feet too. We're yeah. gonna be chewing on them. We're gonna just be licking in between them. Most likely she just hadn't been cared for in her yeah. over years, huh? Because these kind of babies, you wanna make sure that you're keeping their coats and their, just their general health, their gut health nice and healthy. Because we always, everything always starts with the belly. Let me see what I can get ya. That a hump with some of itchies, my kid, okay? Old dogs in shelters just don't have a good shot because everyone comes in and they want a puppy. Here's what people tell me when I say, oh, you should adopt a senior dog. They go, oh, I couldn't do that. And I know why, because you think I'd be heartbroken when the dog died sooner than later. But the thing is, if you adopt a senior dog, if you come to the shelter, you're really doing it for them. Whether it's a month or six months or, you know, a year, you're saying, I'm gonna give them the best life that they can have, whatever's left of it. So they leave this world knowing that they are loved, that there is love, that humans are good. That's why you're doing it. And yes, it will be hard on your heart for sure, but it is so rewarding. Any senior dog I've ever had where that we fostered, like we fostered a senior dog one time and they weren't with us for a few days, but you know what? In those few days, they were loved. Now in the kennel right next to Dawn, I got to meet a pair of sweet dogs, both with unfortunately equally tragic backstories. The young one was scared and the old one, well, she just looked like she had given up. Hi, it's okay, come here. You scared? Now this little one, she started off pretty scared and I found out it is for a good reason because she was just dropped in the night drop, no notes or anything. It's gonna take some time and space with these two. Need a little, a little piece? Oh yeah, a little piece for the little puppy. Now the heartbreaking thing about her is someone left her a night drop and they didn't leave any details. What that tells me is that it wasn't a good Samaritan that found her as a stray because you would write as much information as you could down. So if someone was missing their dog, they could find their dog. More likely, someone put her in the night drop and didn't want anyone to know it was them because they were dumping their dog. You can imagine a dog like this would have major trust issues just being dropped in the night drop. And obviously the person who dropped her in there didn't care about them at all. And it is neglect. If you leave a dog in a night drop and you don't cite the reasons as to why and you're the owner, that is absolutely downright neglect. Animal control could take action on that. All right, we seem to be making progress with just some treats. So we'll just keep that up. Do I need to have some dual treating going on here? <laughs> yes, that's awesome. She's 12, you're 12, darling? And you're at the shelter? What Was she night drop or do we know her story? That one was found at a hospital actually um, by a good Samaritan that worked there. You found at a hospital? A lot of people don't know this, but sometimes dogs come to the shelter because their mom or their dad died. 
and they have nowhere to go. You always want to have a plan of what you do with your pet. If something happens to you, who do they go to? Let's see, what does he open hand treat? Oh, that's even better. Those little bits of progress right there are actually big amounts of progress for dogs like this because it breaks barriers and it helps them in a meet and greet. If they meet someone else, they'll be more likely to take a treat because they know nothing bad's gonna happen. You still okay over here? I know it's your first day. She's only been here for like five minutes, by the way. <laughs> You're brand new, huh? She even has a sign on her kennel to be patient with her and she's new, no loud sounds. Now, old mama here, she's only been here for about five minutes, but the reason she was put in here with her is because with the small dogs, it can really comfort them. And this old gal right here, you know, she's <laughs> she's no threat. And so they know right away that they can put these two together and it may help give them comfort. The shelter staff and team work so hard to make sure each and every one of these dogs are comfortable while they're here. And their hearts just pour in to helping these animals. All right, darling, you need a name. I think that'll help bring out your little personality. What should we name you? She reminds me of Sonic the Hedgehog's little sidekick. I feel like we should call her Tails, especially because she has no tail. And what about your friend? How about, uh, uh, following the theme, we'll go with Sticks. Don't think I don't see the comments about, well, what about cats? Don't you care about cats? You don't like cats? Rocky hates cats. I love cats. If you could adopt any cat at the shelter right now, what cat would you adopt? This dude right here. I love cabbies and he's super sweet and super playful. He likes to talk even though he's quiet right now. He likes to be held and purrs nonstop. Okay, here's another puppy. Meet Lindsay. <laughs> Hi. 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 Immediately, you can tell why she is not getting adopted. Her energy level is off the chart. Okay, now I played with her with all kinds of toys for about 20 minutes and still no drop in energy. What, do you know her story? Um, she was just abandoned in Night Drop as a stray. Oh, as a little puppy? Yeah. I'm sorry, girl. Yeah, she, I think the reason people are passing her by is just because her level of energy, as you can see, she's a wiggly puppy, and because she's so big. You know, smaller puppy is just easier management because you can just pick her up. See, look at that. Yeah, oh, you want some love now? You just want love? And the thing is, I've only spent 20 minutes with her and she's already brought her energy level down a lot. Look at that, that state of mind right there is just relaxing, trust. And you saw when I first started with her, there's no way I would have been able to do this. Some treats, some exercise, some patience. That's a good dog right here. Someone's gonna be very lucky. Look, guys, 20 minutes and we got to this. And you're telling me she's too much work? I'm gonna make sure that we get you with the perfect family, okay? I might have some news for you. I'm not gonna tell you right now because I don't wanna get you excited and then let you down, but get this. Someone is here right now that might be adopting Lindsay. What? I know, this day is, is wild. It's This is so great. You're adopting the Latin Goofies? Yeah. Oh, she's so great. Yeah, we're really excited. What, uh, we nicknamed her Lindsay. Do you have a name for her? Those are the big Yeah, she's coming out of the show. Well, those are, oh, those are great. Yeah. Thanks for adopting her. That's so exciting. You're going home. You're adopted. <laughs> hey, don't you worry. You're going to be next. It's so fun watching them go to their new family. Again, we're giving them a Furbo. This will come in really handy. It can help with separation anxiety. If you have a new puppy at home and you have a Furbo, you can check in on them when you're away, toss them a treat, talk to them. I think it's gonna be a big help. Good luck with your new family, Lindsay. I don't know what it is today, but pets are getting adopted left and right, and it's awesome. We've got a few dogs adopted. Maybe with this string of luck, we can get some cats adopted as well. Okay, now this little furry one right here, we named Maxwell. And right when I arrived at the shelter today, he was just staring me down. And so I decided I had to figure out how to win him over. I mean, the purring. I know, it's like you know that cats purr, but you like forget what it's like until you hold them again and feel it. 
Should I do my standard like sit down, no eye contact? Like I do with dogs? It's working. Okay, it, it, I am no cat expert. I love cats, I want a cat so bad, but our dog Kobe, it would just send him over the top. And with his heart issues, we don't. Getting a little too close and personal there. The attitude. Do you mean catitude? The catitude. <laughs> I think the neat thing about all of this is certainly most people see me as a pro when they watch my channel, but I am constantly learning with pets. And that's what's, I think, the approach you have to take when you go to a shelter to volunteer. It's always about learning and... Hi, what's your name? <laughs> okay, this is not working. I have an idea though. I talked to some of the cat ladies at the shelter and uh, I have a little catnip as a secret weapon. So we're gonna put a little catnip on the toys here. Just a little bit. I'm gonna rub it on there. But this one, this one's the best I think because it's got the little tail. They'll smell, they'll start coming this way. It's working. It's working. They're gonna be like so much more loving and playful now. Yeah, no, you can't have the whole thing, dude. <laughs> you're out of you're out of control. You are cut off. <laughs> Maybe I am the cat expert. Sitting with cats. My next YouTube channel. You're gonna start your own YouTube channel. <laughs> well. Don't do that. Everyone will just watch your channel. They won't watch mine anymore. <laughs> The cool thing is we really did start to earn Maxwell's love and he started playing with us a bit. And next, something unbelievable happened. Maxwell caught a family's eye that was sitting there in the lobby and they adopted him. His new name is Freddy and he's going home. We're gonna send them a new Furbo cat camera to help them with the adoption process. Nicole, who adopted Maxwell, renamed him Freddy. And according to Nicole, we were right. He definitely has orange cat energy. He is a little troublemaker, she says, but they love him a ton. He's eager and curious about everything, and it's so awesome to see how loved and cared for he is. Look at this. I hear somebody might be coming in to get tails. They put a hold on her, and so it could happen today. She could get adopted today, which would be so great because you saw how much she was already warming up. If someone took her home, that would be awesome. But I think they actually moved her to try to help her warm up with maybe some other dogs. So we, we gotta go find her. I think she's inside somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, they put her in here with all the other dogs just so that she can have companionship. So we've got all the littles in here. I just got word the Tails potential adopters are here and it looks like they are even signing the adoption paperwork. All right, and I got the opportunity to talk to Cindy, one of the potential adopters, and she shared something with me that anyone who's lost a pet just knows the pain all too well. Well, I just Get lost my 14-year-old baby, so I need oh, my one. I'm sorry. You had her for 14 years? Yeah. Yeah, it's, so, it's always so hard, but I'm glad you came to adopt. I appreciate it. She was the second I looked at you thumb. And you just knew. Yeah. I was really touched that she took the time to share all of this with me, and I think it made what's coming next even more meaningful. You're getting adopted! <laughs> Do you remember yesterday? Yes. Oh, oh wow. yeah. And it's a camera. You can, when you're away from the house, you can just check in on her. You can toss treats on your phone so you can give her treats when, when you're gone. And yeah. it'll give you alerts. So if she's barking a lot or under stress, it'll send alerts right to your phone. I've seen the commercial on those. Oh, it's, it's so cool. cool. Thank you, Cindy and Jeff, for adopting her. They renamed Tails Bella. They sent us this picture and said she's doing fantastic. Oh, but what about Styx that was in the same kennel with her found at the hospital? I have an update. It's actually a really happy reunion story because it turns out Styx family was looking everywhere for her. They were searching veterinarian offices, other shelters, and they finally located her at Animal Friends of the Valleys. They were reunited and now they'll live happily ever after. 
I have two favorites right now. <laughs> one is in community, a two. He's like a little cream and red orange one. He's so friendly. Before you even walk in, he's meowing at you through the window. As soon as he sees you, he's bolting towards you, trying to climb up you. I love him. The other one is we have a gray and white that's over here um, in his own little spot, um, but he's so playful through the window. He, every time he sees a person, he's rolling around and he's following you. Get this, I just got back to the farm and I found out Kyla actually adopted Harmon. Yes, Harmon, congratulations on your new family. This is what I'm telling you about the entire team at Animal Friends of the Valley. They pour their whole heart into helping these animals and Kyla is yet just another example of how they practice what they preach. Kyla renamed Harmon Frankie which I think is a great name. And Frankie lives with three other cats at the house. Typically, that can go really great or really bad. But he's extremely affectionate and Kyla says he's really invested in anything she's doing. I'll be sitting at my desk working and he'll be sitting on the ground next to me just staring up at me. He won't meow, like he won't try to get my attention. He will just stare at me. It is the funniest thing. He's really goofy. That's the only way I can describe it. He's just a really silly little dude. It's like he knows and he really cares about the love that he's getting from Kyla and their family. When you ask Kyla if she thinks he's bad luck. I don't think that he's unlucky and I don't think that he's lucky either. If anything, like I'm just lucky to have such a cool cat. Like he's genuinely so freaking sweet and amazing. Like he's great. Adopt more cats, all of the cats, adopt all of them, please. Well said Kyla, thank you for being so awesome and saving Frankie. But I will tell you, my heart is heavy right now. I can't stop thinking about Dawn and I've made a decision that I'm gonna go back and get her. Now, I don't have all the answers yet. I'm gonna make some phone calls. I've gotta figure this out. And if you wanna be a part of this with me, I would love to have you as a member. It helps me continue to be able to do what I'm doing and you'll be the first to know. I'll update you on what the plan is with Dawn. Many of you have been following Dawn's story. I went back to get her. I couldn't wait. I pulled her out of there. We groomed her. We took her to get a puppuccino. Okay, here we go. This is this is Dawn Hello. and she's 12. Aww. And this will certainly be her first ever pup cup. Hey. So let's get into it, Dawn. Okay, go ahead. Let's see what okay. she does. There we go. Come on, Dawn. She's kind of blind too, I think. She's just like so excited. Oh, there it is. Like, she <gasps> found it. oh snap. Oh, <laughs> yay. oh my goodness. Looking for it. She just nibbled on the cup a little bit. <laughs> yeah, she didn't even know how to eat it. She's like trying to bite the cup. Good job, Dawn. She's like, give me another one, line them up. And after that puppuccino, we took her to Frosted Faces Foundation because the founders, Kelly and Andy, were generous enough to take her in. She's now in a foster home, waiting for her forever home. Thanks to Frosted Faces Foundation, we were able to help her, to save her. Senior dogs do not fare well in the shelter, but this story is gonna have a happy ending. Sometimes I see the wildest things at the shelter, but this, wow, this was really different. I'm walking down the hall and I see this black and white young Australian shepherd that has jumped up all the way into the windowsill. And let me tell you, this is not normal dog behavior. A cat may be sure, but not a dog. Now, what do you think? Do you think she's scared or is this a spot of comfort for her and she's excited to see people walking by? I cannot figure it out. We have got to go in and sit down with her and see what the deal is. Hi, baby. It's okay. Oh no. As I suspected, she is terrified. There are signs of this everywhere. For example, her food all over the place she most likely panicked, landed in her food bowl, and it went everywhere. At first glance, it's cute and it's endearing, but when you sit there, when you go in there with her, you realize this is out of fear. She is shut down, and the best thing she can think of to do is find the high point in the farthest corner she can, which in this kennel is a windowsill. I've got to try something, so I, I start with a treat, and that works. Okay, okay. We're okay with a little eye contact. Just the, the little moments of progress. You come down here? Hi. Yeah. I'm trying to mix some things in here. Some eye contact, touch when I give her a treat. Sometimes I'll try to reinforce a treat with a touch and show her it's a good thing. I try to switch up my stance a little bit. You can see she's still flinching. I think sometimes it's like, if you can't beat him, join him. <laughs> She won't come down to me. I'll just sit up in the windowsill with her for a little bit. I 
something I can try here. I've got a whole treat stick. Let me try to look away from her. Now I am no certified expert or anything, but I think if I can get her out of the windowsill, that will disassociate the fear that she is associated with the windowsill. So that, that's why I'm trying to do that. If she wants to stay there and she is not ready yet, that is okay. I will respect those boundaries. And after about 20 minutes, I just said, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna sit on the floor here. You sit in the windowsill and then this happened. It's a big deal. And I may not look excited, but I, trust me, I am holding it in. But I cannot bring that level of energy to this moment, but wow, I'm excited. Oh, this makes my heart so happy. Like the fact that she is trusting me enough to even make, come here, come here, come here. I'm like doing everything I can to keep her from jumping back up in her comfort spot. Here. Ooh, I didn't want to hit. Oh, it's a good girl. Yeah. I want her comfort space to be good people not a windowsill. She's making good eye contact with me, like no problem. Good girl, good girl. Yeah, come here, come here, come here. Oh. <laughs> that was still a good five minutes. You did good. I am really proud of your progress. <laughs> come here, go another treat. I'll bet she jumps down right away. Watch. Come on, you just kidding. Good girl, look at that. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're a good girl. You're a smart girl too, fast learner. Oh, this is so awesome. I think if you adopt a dog like this and you're willing to give it time, like weeks, months even, and just also know like, she's always probably gonna be a little reserved. You can get yourself the most rewarding relationship, like a dog who, it's almost like they just appreciate you so much more because they know they've been here. It's like they, it's kind of like they've hit bottom already. Oh. And in that journey together, the bond that you two will create, there is nothing like it. I don't know if you noticed it, but even her little ears now, they're like playful and bouncy forward. It's all those little body language cues that like, unless you get in a room with a dog and spend time with them, you can't see them. They happen so fast, they're so subtle. But in the dog world, those subtle cues are huge. Come here, come here. Dave's a good girl. Dave's a good girl. If you're ever working with or training a dog, sometimes like 20 minutes at max and then they're just kind of tired of that. And anything past that, you're just not gonna see as much progress. And I, I, we make good progress with her, like mentally and physically, we saw changes. And so I'm gonna call it right now, but I've gotta work on figuring out how to promote her. Because she needs a home, an environment like this for her when she's already stressed out. It's just hard. Look at that. She didn't want me to leave now. Oh. Did you see she came down from the window? Yes, I oh did. Oh my goodness. I think I have a name for her. You know that you know that song, How Much Is the Doggy in the Window? Do you know that song? Yeah. Do you know I, that song? I've actually heard it, yeah. Okay. Um, the singer, I just looked it up, and it's Patty Page. So what about, uh, what about Paige? Paige is a good name. Perfect, Paige. yeah. How much is that doggy in the window? We just named her Paige. Let's see here, how old is she? She's about a year. But wait, 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 wait. Uh, she has a hold on her? She has a hold on her? Yes, she has a hold for today. Oh, that is great. Oh, she might be going home. Okay, I'm gonna dig in, find out what's going on. But right now, I wanna introduce you to an amazing puppy, puppy alert. I think the thing with just right now with Malinois, and I don't know if he's full Belgian Malinois, but there's just so many in the shelter right now. They definitely are one of the mo more common breeds in the shelter. And he was just seeming a little sad, a little stressed out. Look at that stress right there. Oh. So I just wanted to pull him out and spend a little time with him. Oh, I think at this age, like it's a pivotal age, He's probably six months, you know, four to six months. And if he can get adopted now and get into a home that can really guide him, it'll go a long way. It breaks my heart to see a dog so young just really struggling 
to comprehend what's going on. Why am I in this place, in this situation? Hey, oh, there you're coming to life, huh? Nice. There's just something too about big puppies, I mean really big puppies where, I don't know, they've got to be my favorite. Like I love all puppies, but big puppies with big paws like this that are almost as big as my hand. These little floppy ears. Yeah. We knew his story. Yeah. Well, you, you're the only one left, bud. Okay, get this. While I was sitting with this puppy, the team came in and they said that there's someone that wants to do a meet and greet. They're in the lobby right now, ready to meet him. So that's exciting. Okay, now this next dog is a husky mix. Has the most piercing eyes, but also a really sad story because it wasn't her fault. Well, it was her fault, technically. Let's sit with her and then I'll tell you the story. Look at her eyes. She's so pretty. Can you sit? You know any tricks? Sit. 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 Good girl. She's one of the more unique mixes I've seen. Look at her face. Huskies are probably equal to German Shepherds in the shelter right now for the most common breed, at least at this shelter. And the thing about Huskies is they're such a misunderstood breed because they are amazing. They're smart, they're dynamic, they're loyal, but they're also like very independent and they're escape artists like I've never seen before. <laughs> and they're also prey driven, like a lot of dogs. And unfortunately, the reason she's back is because of her prey drive. I guess the previous family had a cat and chickens chickens are no more. I know, I can't believe you. Such a pretty dog and you did that. And so she's either got to go into a home that can really work on that or preferably a home without chickens. I will tell you this though, I am sorry. I'm sorry you're back here and that, that didn't work out. You probably have no clue why. <laughs> I'm sure she thought she really, really was doing a good thing getting the chickens. You're a good dog. I always try with the dogs to give them kind of positive affirmations. Like watch this. Good girl. Good girl. The difference in her face when I tell her she's a good girl is like night and day. And you know what though? She is. Okay, let's have you work for this one. It's the last one. Sit. Good girl. That's a good girl. Oh, get this. As I'm sitting there with Rosie, it turns out someone's interested and they want to meet Rosie in the meet and greet area. So they came in, grabbed Rosie, and they're meeting right now. And look, right off the bat, it's going great. Nice couple. This gal seems like she's really enjoying this. This day's going great so far. Could this be an adoption? Yeah. Well, what do we think? Oh yeah, oh, we're, we're she's our forever yeah. puppy. Yeah, oh, that's great. Baby. If you're anything like me, you're probably celebrating, but we might be counting our chickens before they hatch. <laughs> Maybe the wrong phrase to use with her, but then this happened right after they said yes. No! As soon as they said yes, they're going to adopt Rosie. They went up front, they started filling out the paperwork, and they just thought, man, we're gonna get out of here, we're gonna leave and go home. But it's for a good reason. It's because they want to get their dogs, bring them up here, and just make sure that they all get along, and I am all for that. So, adoption not happening yet, but cross your fingers that they come back and that it happens very soon. I don't care how tough you are. When you see two dogs huddled together in the corner of a kennel, using each other for support, that may or may not know each other, if your heart doesn't sink, well, you are not a dog person. I've noticed with duos, there's typically one that's the leader and has a bit more courage. It's willing to take the treat first or take the love first or advance just a little bit first. And so I usually try and work with that one first before reaching out to the other dog that might be closed down a bit more. Look at that, we got two treat chompers. I think these two are probably siblings. At least they came in together. What you're seeing right here is just us spending 15, 20 minutes together, just getting little treats, getting comfortable with each other. You're so friendly. Hey, there we go. 
They're coming to life? Hi, cutie. Oh, what a cute pup. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hey, come on, come on. You gotta share. Come on. I bet you come out. I bet you come out for treats. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it's like I gotta coax this one out so I can hand the other one a treat. <laughs> They're a little scared and timid right now, but I, within 24 hours of them being in your house, I guarantee they're gonna be running around and playful little pups. Like they're just scared right now because of the environment. I don't think they're I don't think they're scared dogs. Hi. It's comforting though, just being here with them. Like you can see they've already kind of opened up and, and that makes me really happy. <laughs> you checking out the phone? Here, let's let's put treats on there and see if they'll eat the treat on the phone. Oh, <laughs> I found it. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Can we just talk about our other little friendly neighbor in here too? Look at this, look at this little munchkin. Look at this guy. So he is blind. I think he's about 10. Do we know his name? Gucci. Gucci? Here, sorry, I forgot you're blind. Here. You think someone's looking for him? Yeah. I'd say so too, yeah, I mean. owner known. And then we have these two, and now they're jealous as to why the other dog is getting some treats. Come here, come here, come on. Come on, cute little paws. Progress, I love this so much. This is like, it was like the saddest kennel that I came into and now it's like the most fun little kennel with all my fun little new friends. And, oh, and you know what, by the way, all the messages y'all are sending me about you wanna do what I do, I think that is awesome and you should. You might not be able to run right to the rescue or shelter and start sitting with the dogs because that takes a little time, a little practice, a little trust from the rescue or shelter. But I will tell you this, these dogs need you. And the best way to get started, because I love it when y'all ask me like, how do I get started in doing what you are doing? I wanna start a rescue. Start small, like go to your local rescue or shelter and volunteer. Even if it's a couple hours a week or a few hours a month, you will learn so much in that time. And you will be able to impact the lives of so many pets just by doing that. Like you can do what I do. You can go out and help these animals. So if you're watching this and you're going, man, I want to do this with my life. I want this to be a part of my life. I'm here to tell you, you can. That's pretty exciting. And by the way, you guys are being so good letting each other take turns on the treats. Alexis, we don't have names on these other two, do we? No, we don't. If someone named you Gucci, I imagine they're coming for you. Because if you are truly as valuable as a handbag, right, is that right, Gucci's a handbag? Yeah, it's a designer. I know dogs, not handbags. Okay, well, should we name the other two designers then? Louie and Vuitton. <laughs> uh, Louie has a little brown in him, and Vuitton is completely white. Louie, Vuitton, and Gucci. Don't give me, don't give me that look. I'm trying to flex my knowledge of designers. You're doing great. <laughs> okay, let's keep our fingers crossed for all these kennel mates. We we can get them adopted. I need more treats. Going to sit with the next. I no, think we're out. Are we out? Yeah. Oh, they're just too good. Uh, by the way, the treats you guys see me giving to the dogs, you can get those and we, we make all of these. Like these are our treats. So it helps support us, but also correct me if I'm wrong, it will be the best dog treat your dog has ever had. True story. You don't, you don't have to hold it. It's not the best advertisement because it doesn't have the treats in there. It's just like an empty bag. <laughs> but seriously, your dog will love them and I'll ship them out to you if you order them. Just go to rockykanaka.com slash jerky to get some for your dog. I don't think I've ever sat with a Malamute at the shelter. So when I saw him, I was so excited. And look at his face. It looks like someone drew him, like he's not even real. On top of that, he's fluffy. What is his story? Hi, why are you so fluffy? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey Siri, call Alexis. Uh, what's Rama's story, do you know? He was found by a good Samaritan, brought him over to animal control, like just at the corner of the street, and they told him to bring the dog here. Uh, and at first he was apparently really nervous, um, and they couldn't even check him to see if he was a girl or a boy, oh. um, or scan him for really a, a chip or anything. So he's uh, definitely seems like he's made a change. 
Okay, awesome. Anything else I should know about him? Just that the dog walkers say that he's really friendly and playful now, and he's calm and well-behaved, and he's easy to walk. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You hear that? Everyone says you're a good boy. <laughs> I would agree with that. Look at you. Look at that face. And he's so fluffy. He's like a cotton ball. No joke, you are the fluffiest dog ever. When you look at a dog like this and you just see the defined face and the characteristics that he has, how can you not love dogs at that point? And the amount that he loves to cuddle, like, it, could he be a dream dog? I think so. <laughs> like, I think so. I think he's probably got a pretty fair high level of energy, but his desire right now for love and just being close to somebody is overriding all of that energy because he hasn't been out for his walk today yet. Him melting into me like a marshmallow, making me feel like I'm a s'more, <laughs> it just makes me so happy. Oh, I feel so great. You're a good boy. I think the surprising reason he's not getting adopted is people look at him and they see the energy he has and they think he's just gonna be a tremendous amount of work. And right now he's in Southern California. A lot of people, rightfully so, are gonna be concerned about the heat. Alaska Malamutes were bred originally for their strength and endurance. They're sled dogs. I mean, they're an Arctic dog. Alaska is in their name. We're gonna have to work really hard to find him the right family that can work with him. The thing with Malamutes is they take ongoing regular maintenance. That, that is the one thing I'll say if you get a dog like this, which is not bad, but I mean, Mel just groomed him a week ago and he's already got some matting. Like he needs to be brushed constantly. Nah, I wish I could sit with him all day with all these dogs. There's so many good dogs in the shelter right now. There are gonna be some very lucky families if they choose to adopt any of these dogs. Ramna was adopted. Ah! <laughs> yes, that makes me so happy, that little teddy bear. And the staff actually renamed Ramna Sonic. They felt that was a bit more fitting. And the new adopters actually kept that name Sonic. Now, they didn't want to do an interview. They didn't want to give any pictures. They must not watch this YouTube channel. <laughs> but I don't care. It just makes me so happy that Sonic is now in his forever home and he's doing really great. Okay, I actually have an idea because there's not a lot of time left for Paige. And so, what if I go live? At least that way if her potential family doesn't show up I'm doing a live video and hopefully I'm spreading the word that she needs a home because she's gonna need that extra level of support because of how timid she is she doesn't come across as a confident dog that someone might want to adopt right out of the gate so I'm going live and let's see if that does anything going live was really amazing because you all are the most amazing community I gotta tell you the amount of just hearts and positive comments that came in was really fantastic. Also, I was blown away by how many of you knew that song, How Much Is the Doggy in the Window? <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was weird because I knew that song, but I guess there are a lot of weirdos out there, just like me. Okay, I really hope this helps because there are only a few minutes left today, and so if her family doesn't come, maybe, maybe, this will help spread the word and someone will come tomorrow. Yeah, the hold is for today. Just double checking, but that live was pretty good, huh? Yeah. She did so good in there. I know, so okay. much better. But fingers crossed though, because we got, what, like 10 minutes? Yeah. Maybe? Frankly, the page thing is stressing me out, the time limit. But here's some good news. Rosie's potential adopters actually came back with their two dogs to do a meet and greet. Now, all we have to do is make sure that this goes off without a hitch. Okay, seems like at first everything's going all right. Whoa, big hug for mom. That's a plus. A German Shepherd doesn't seem to mind some kisses. Okay, I think we're gonna find out the answer any minute here. If you're watching any of this and you're like, I wanna do this one day, uh, but you're busy right now, you can't do it, or you just wanna be a bigger part of this, I would love to have you be a bigger part of this. And you can by becoming a member. Just hit the join button. You get to be the first to know any of these updates and it just helps us continue to help more dogs. Hey, whoa, is that a high five? Oh, this could be good. But it's not up to me, it's up to them. Let's find out what they say. Attention in the shelter. Animal Friends of the Valleys would like to congratulate the family for adopting our one-year-old Husky Mix, Rosie. Thank you to the amazing couple that adopted Rosie. Rosie, congrats on your new family. 
We followed up with Mindy and Ron after, and they said all the dogs are getting along great. There was one concern on would Rosie get in the pool, probably having fun in there or want Rosie to exercise like the other dogs are. And guess what? Mindy said, to her delight, Rosie got right in the pool. All three dogs hang out comfortably with each other, and Rosie is going to live her best life now with no chickens. Okay, but wait, what about our little Malinois puppy? Okay, so get this. The gentleman's name right now that is looking at this little puppy is named Roger. And Roger came here specifically because he is greenlit for a service dog. And so he wants to get one from the shelter. Awesome, but he wants to make sure that his kids and the puppy get along. So I'm holding my breath here that this works. Now I know dogs and I know kids. Well, <laughs> well, I'm still learning with both. But notice that hug right there? That could be a really good thing or a bad thing because the dog or the kid could make a sudden movement but no, it seemed to work out just fine. I think everything's going just fine. Wait a minute, is that? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> well, after the potty accident, everyone still seems to be okay. That didn't seem to be a major deterrent like it could be. Back to seeing if this puppy gets along with both the kiddos. The kids and the dog are doing great, but it's all going to come down to what dad decides. And being a dad, I know firsthand you cannot make these kind of decisions lightly. Okay, so he's a cool dog, yeah. but uh, what's it going to be? Are you guys going to take him home? Yeah, we're taking him home. What? That's awesome. <laughs> you want me to go get him? Yeah. You got a new collar? Yeah. Okay, let me go get him. And get this, dad even let the kids name their new puppy. They named him Primal. Perfect. Attention in the shelter. Animal Friends of the Valley would like to congratulate the family for adopting our five-month-old shepherd mix that they have named Primal. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Primal. Roger, Emma, Ben, thank you for saving Primal's life. We followed up with Roger. He's got his hands full. I can relate as a dad. And get this, he said Primal fits in perfectly with the family. Oh, and his kids are really excited to see Primal's video because his daughter loves Rocky's videos. Thank you, Emma, I think you're awesome. Thank you for being so invested in dog rescue. Roger, thank you for teaching this to your kids at a very early age. In my book, you all are an awesome family. Yes, <laughs> that is so awesome. It makes me so happy to see all these adoptions, but there are still dogs that need our help. And you know what, you can help. When you share this, it could be the share that leads to that dog's forever home. Paige's potential family didn't show up, but there's no reason to be sad because we had a lot of wonderful adoptions. Now, after I left, I was so disappointed about Paige not having someone come and get her. But let me tell you, the staff continue to work with her. Glenn, a trainer that we've worked with in the past, he's fantastic, even continued to work with her. And the whole team working with her made an impact because she was adopted just a couple days later. That first hole didn't work out, but you know what? Sometimes things are meant to be because Brenda and Alan adopted Paige, renamed her Sadie, and are giving her all of the love she needs so that she can build up her confidence to be a happy, healthy dog. She was very timid. We had to all sit on the floor and just kind of ignore her. And we had, all had treats in our hands. After about five or 10 minutes, started inching her way in. And you know, a little while after that, she was being very friendly. If somebody's looking to adopt, make sure before you take them home that you're making a decision that's gonna stick because there's nothing more crushing in my opinion than to have to take a dog back. Make sure you got the right dog. I know you're probably asking me, how can you be a part of this? Well, I'd love for you to be a part of this. You can become a monthly member. Just hit that join button. You'll be the first to know updates when a dog's adopted, if something's going wrong, and just be part of an awesome dog rescue loving community. Another way to help is come volunteer if you live in the area or go to your local shelter or rescue. You can help pets just like I do. You just gotta get started. And volunteering is the way to do that. Don't forget, get my treats for your dog. I know they will love them. I hand make all of these in my bakery. I'll put that link down below and get Vince's coloring book you will love it. And guess what? My team and I, we're going to continue providing updates on all of these dogs. They'll always be at RockyKanaka.com. So if you ever have any questions, just go there and you'll be able to find the updates.